What is up, everybody? Kier Gomes here, and welcome back. I'm jumping on a trend, but I'm doing it super late, which I think makes it really cool. Actually, I think I'm I think I'm like bringing something back that was cool last year, and that's pretty sick. Actually, I think I'm just a little bit late to the party, but uh, you know, you guys have heard of these tier list things. Uh, during quarantine, they were probably one of the most popular pieces of, of like content, like the concept of this thing. The trend was super popular and kind of satisfying to watch, oddly. Anyway, I don't know why it never occurred to me or seemingly anybody else to make a playing card tier list. Uh, and you know, I just, I never got around to it because I'm gonna be honest, I don't have the skills to make a tier list. Even just looking at the design, a simple design was pretty intimidating to me. But my friends, tier maker got me covered i went on there and i found a playing cards tier list where they selected some of the popular brands within the playing card industry and community a lot of ones that you know you would expect to be on a generic tier list for playing cards but nonetheless some good options and i thought today it would be fun to go ahead and do one of those tier lists and just see where these cards would land you know especially uh, I, I think some of these cards are a little bit older and they were kind of hype when they came out and maybe since have died off in popularity or you know people's taste change my tastes have changed a lot and I think that there's maybe something to learn from this. So I am super excited to get into it. But before we do, please do drop a like on this video and subscribe. Okay, if you haven't already, that's important. And without further ado, let's roll that intro and get you guys on your way, 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 way. <laughs> okay, intro. All right, so like I said, I know I'm a little bit late to this, but I think it's gonna be kind of fun. It's been a while since uh, since I've seen some of these decks, and I think it's gonna be interesting to kind of like reevaluate how my tastes have changed over time. Uh, but for my categories, I did label them uh, accordingly, I guess. Uh, we have my top tier, which is labeled brick worthy. These are gonna be decks that I would pick up a full brick if I could, and if it was, you know, appropriately priced, okay? So this is gonna be actually assuming that all of these cards are affordable, okay? Because a lot of them are not. EDC, this might be a deck that uh, you know, maybe I don't buy a full brick when it comes out, but maybe I buy them like two at a time and I find myself constantly having to go back and buy them. That actually happens to me all the time with certain decks. Middle of the road, the mid tier, we have occasional use. These will be decks that like randomly I'll pick up for a couple of days or that like I'll go through a phase where I'm really into a certain deck for a while. Uh, and I guess I should also clarify by saying I didn't choose any of these decks. These are the brands and photos and everything that were preloaded into this tier maker. If this video does well, it might be interesting to make one with like newer and I guess more like relevant and up-to-date decks. So if you guys are interested in that, the best way you can let me know is by uh, dropping a like and of course a comment letting me know you like this video. All right, so the second to last tier is don't love. These will be decks that maybe I have, but I, I truthfully just don't love them or you know maybe use them so little that I might as well not have them. And then the bottom tier, we've got no thanks. These are cards that I'm just not in any way interested in owning, or if I do own them, maybe they're decks that like I don't know why I own, uh, but these will just be decks that I'm not into or not interested in and definitely would not own again. I'm gonna try to go in like just the order that the photos are from bottom to top. I think that might be easiest, but I might have to bounce around a little bit. I guess we will see. Uh, looking at these brands though, this is, a, this is gonna be an interesting list for sure. And uh, it, it seems, it, se it looks pretty easy and fun from my research watching a bunch of these videos. So uh, if it's not easy or fun, then kudos to the people that do this every single week. All right, so I'm gonna kick us off with this first deck. This looks like the, that's the Union deck by Theory 11. Uh, this is an older Theory 11 deck, one of the, uh, one of the only two-toned back designs that Theory 11 has ever done. Um, I do own this deck. I like the back design. It's like uh, brown and khaki colored. Uh, the thing is, this is one of those decks that's super extremely custom, and I'm not really thrilled uh, about that. I don't love fully custom decks like that. So this one, I'm gonna put at don't love uh, for now. It might change. I'm not gonna commit to that, but for now I'm gonna put it at don't love, because I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it, but I definitely don't love it. <laughs> All right, next we got the Red Monarchs. Uh, I like the blue ones more. Oh, those are on the list too. Uh, the red ones are good though. I do like the red ones. I uh, definitely wouldn't pick up a brick of them. Maybe, maybe an everyday carry type situation. I, if I'm being real, it's more of an occasional use type scenario. I do like the Red Monarchs, but I don't like them that much. And I, I do go through Monarchs phases, but even then, not always the red ones. So I'm gonna put that one at occasional. 
Uh, all right, we got the orange dapper deck. Uh, I don't know if this is the V1 or the V2. It does make a difference. The V1 was printed in Taiwan. The V2 was printed uh, in the US. Uh, I do like the way that they both feel though. I don't love the orange one as much. I'm gonna put this one at occasional use. Uh, I think I'm gonna put that one actually in don't love. I used to love it, I really did. I like the blue one a lot, but I don't love the orange one anymore, so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. All right, next we got this uh, Superior deck. This is by Expert Playing Card as well, printed in Taiwan. Uh, I used to own a bunch of these. I had like kind of every color, and then as a gift, I got like the holographic uh, gilded ones. I, you know, I like the way the cards handle a lot more than I like the way they feel, and I think that's gonna be a trend uh, that we're gonna see again uh, later in this video. But these ones, honestly, I've found more suitable substitutes. Uh, I do like cards printed in Taiwan, but I found some that have way, way better design work. So this one I'm gonna put in the no thanks. Uh, there was a time when it could have been different, but as of right now, there's really no reason uh, that I would purchase uh, or own another superior deck. Guess it's not that superior. <laughs> uh, I like to kid around. All right, next we got an interesting one. This might be controversial. This is Chris Ramsey's first V2 playing cards. Those are the black and gold ones. Now, I love the first V1. I really do. I think that deck was a masterpiece and it was everything that Ramsey's audience at the time really, really deserved. The V2, I was not, I, I wasn't super fond of, and it was only for one reason, and it was that gold foil border that was added to the outside. And I don't know why, but it made the cards look cheaper uh, than like the V1, which didn't have that. So I like the foil, but it was a little overused on the on the V2. Um, but I do have this deck. I bought three, I think, when it came out, so I wasn't even that sold on it when I first saw it. Uh, I think I more or less just bought it so I could review it. Uh, I'm gonna put this one at don't love. I'm gonna put this one at don't love. Cause I, it's all right, but I don't love it. All right, next we got uh, another controversial deck. This is the blue Memento Mori deck by Murphy's Magic. Um, now, if you guys don't know the controversy behind this deck, I won't get into it. I don't really care about it that much. It's old news, but uh, essentially after Ramsey left Murphy's Magic, I guess they just went ahead and printed a blue version of his deck, Memento Mori. Uh, the trailer was extremely similar. The cards were extremely lazy. Every single thing was blue, the hearts, the clubs. Um, so it's a messy deck. I don't like it. I was not a huge fan of the Mem Memento Mori V1. Uh, and uh, even less so for the V2. So I'm gonna put this one in no thanks. Uh, and you guys can thank me for that because I know there's probably a bunch of you that hate that deck. <laughs> All right, now we got the Cherry Casino V1. Uh, now I hate to say every deck is controversial, but this is one that you would expect me to put in Brickworthy. Um, but I'm gonna put it in EDC. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I really believe if this deck was available in normal quantities and you could buy a brick of it for the normal cost like you know 12 bucks a deck i probably at that point would not buy a brick i might buy a couple at a time or a half brick and you know see how i do maybe i use them maybe i don't but i really think that the only reason i would buy a brick of the cherry casino v1 now is because you can't get them uh I don't think, I think that if they just existed in the world and they were as available as like bicycles, I don't think I would buy a full brick of those. All right, now we got the Orbit V4. This is like, for me, this is midway for Orbit. Like I really love the deck, but there's some that I like a lot more and then there's some that I like a lot less. This one is midway. Again, if it was completely readily available, I might not buy a full brick. So I'm gonna put this one in EDC and I think it belongs there for me. All right, now we got the Orbit V1. Okay, hear me out on the Orbit V1. Uh, I I know it's 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 kind of you know it's a staple deck for a lot of people uh, and it was Orbit's first deck which is really exciting but I think that the Cardistry Con reprints are better I have both I don't like how thick the borders are on the V1 I think they're just a little too thick for me um, I, you know I don't know what Chris was going for but he does and if that's what he wanted him to look like then you know no shade or anything but for me uh, it's a it's it's not my favorite Orbit deck not by a lot I'm gonna put this one in Don't Love. Okay, don't come for me in the comments, boys. It's all good. All right, we got the blue monarchs. Uh, I like those more than the red monarchs, but those are still an occasional use. I don't break out the monarchs very often. They're just so fancy, and I'm not fancy. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I use them, but most of the time I don't. Uh, what is this? This looks like Mirage, maybe? I think this is Patrick Kuhn's deck Mirage. 
Uh, and I, I, I don't really like that deck. I'm gonna put that one in no thanks. I don't own it, I've never owned it, um, and it's because it's just never appealed to me. I love Patrick Kuhn, I don't love that deck, sorry. All right, then we have the um, uh, Artisan decks. I like the white gold ones more than the black gold ones, uh, but these, just like the Monarchs, are a little fancy for me. Those are gonna go, actually I'm gonna put the white ones in occasional use, and then I'm gonna put the black ones in don't love, because I, I, I that's how I feel. And <laughs> I'm putting them there because that's how I fucking feel. All right, next we got the SNL deck. This one is by Theory 11. This is, I believe, the first time Theory 11 ever put the color pink on the faces of their cards. Uh, the hearts and diamonds on this deck were uh, like a really bright pink. That one in the Heed the Call Howler Bros deck had that same color, and I really, really liked that. Uh, and I, I thought it was very nostalgic having like the, you know, like the the more cowbell uh, guy on the on the the court cards. I don't, I don't really like the deck. I bought it when it came out for nostalgia, uh, used it, got rid of it, don't care about it. So I'm gonna go with no thanks on that one. Uh, appreciate the effort, but nostalgia doesn't always, uh, doesn't always win, doesn't always favor. Orbit V3, um, this is another one of the Orbit decks that I'm not crazy about. Uh, it's the first one designed by Daniel Schneider. I'm not a huge fan of purple, kind of as it is. Nah, this, this one's not, not really for me. I'm gonna give this one a, I'm gonna give this one a don't love. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move the Orbit V1 to no thanks, which is lower. Uh, and it's because the Orbit CC19 reprints exist. If those didn't exist, maybe that would be different, but that's where we're at for now. And I'm comfortable with that. I'm good with it. Ooh, this one's fun. We got vintage studs for the next one. Uh, if you guys know stud playing cards, they were actually playing cards manufactured in the US by Walgreens. Uh, which was really cool and the vintage ones were extremely thin playing cards like they were really really thin uh, They had a, a very interesting coating nothing like the Jerry's Nuggets or anything like that um, You know, I don't know how you guys feel about those, but I don't really get it uh, But the vintage studs are cool and I really do like them and they do feel really nice um, These ones if they were available uh, you know to buy in a full brick I would probably buy a mixed brick of the blue ones and the red ones and I say that because uh, you know some of the vintage ones that I have a lot of them I you know I, you find them used uh, I don't think I have any that have ever been brand new but used they feel good and they feel so unique uh, and not unique like as an excuse that they feel like shit <laughs> like they actually feel really good all right we got the white monarchs uh, I don't like these I'm not gonna lie I think these are my least favorite monarchs out of all of them um, these ones and probably the um, uh, Chinese New Year's ones. I don't like these at all. I'm gonna put these in don't love. I know they're rare. I know they're hype. I know they're whatever. I, I don't care for them. Personally, I don't think they're worth the money, but I also, uh, I just, I think the, they're a little too sparse for me. That's all it is. Bicycle Maiden Backs. I like these as much as the Rider Backs, for sure. I have a bunch. I think they were on sale at uh, playingcarddecks.com. And uh, and I grabbed like a, a bunch of the, the red ones and the blue ones. Um, I'm still gonna put these though in occasional use because for the most part I find myself picking up premium decks more than like the maiden backs uh, and that's just is what it is but I go through phases all right now we got the dapper deck uh, blue now, this is a reader back uh, I like the v1 it was printed in Taiwan I like the v2 that was printed here I'm gonna put this one in EDC and I'm gonna do that because uh, there was a an actual time when that deck was kind of my EDC it was like because it's marked it's a reader back super easy marking um, and I like the colors, so I, that's one that I, I use a little bit more than occasionally, so it deserves, I think, to be there. Okay, now we're looking at the Phoenix deck. Uh, this is an interesting one for me because I hate the design of the Phoenix deck. I think it's so ugly, but I use the Phoenix deck all the time. I've got a bunch of these because they feel so good. They're plastic coated and they just feel amazing and they last forever. I'm gonna put these as EDC and it is interesting because I hate the way that they look but I do use them all the time. And if I'm being honest with myself, you know, anything you use on a weekly or, or every couple of weeks basis, it deserves to be one of your EDCs. All right, we got the B playing cards. Uh, one of the best feeling decks of cards, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I always said uh, when when I was younger, I always said this. Anytime I make my first deck of cards or whenever the time comes and I'm doing my first deck, I want it to be printed on B paper. And uh, we did that. Slow Hands V1 was printed on B paper. Uh, 
So that's special. However, I like my cards to have borders. In the real world, I don't use Bs very often. Uh, a lot of cards are printed on that same stock that are better designed. I'm gonna put this one in Don't Love. Uh, I do use Bs, I guess, but I mean, just not enough. I don't, I don't I'm not, I wouldn't pass on them. I wouldn't pass on them, but don't love them. All right, we got bicycle rider backs. Uh, these ones I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the everyday carry, and the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I do use bicycles pretty much uh, every day. I've got some right here. Uh, I love I love bicycles. I use them a lot. I like the blue ones uh, more than the red ones, but uh, but either way. Moving on, Orbit V6. Now this is indeed one of my favorite Orbit decks. I think the, the new Orbit 8 is my favorite, uh, but the Orbit V6, definitely the Orbit deck that I've owned the most of, that I've used the most. Um, I, I would say for a long time, it, it kind of had that special place in my heart, and it still does. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this one at Brickworthy, uh, and I'm gonna put it in front of the studs, because I think it deserves to be there. Yeah. Yeah. As always, this episode is not sponsored by Orbit. I don't know how they keep finding their way into my fucking videos, though. All right, next we got another classic, the Cherry Casino True Black. This was the deck before the metallic, the age of the metallic cherry, uh, which I, I don't love. I, I love the uh, the flat colors. The black one is probably in my top three favorite Cherry Casino decks. I'm gonna put this one, I'm gonna put this one at Everyday Carry. Uh, I do have a brick of these. You know what? I'm gonna put it at Brickworthy because I do. No, I'm gonna put it at Everyday Carry. I do have the brick. I might never get through all of them. I think I've probably got like at least half a brick left. All right, next we got the Memento Moris. Um, I did own this deck. I didn't buy it when it came out, uh, and then just everybody loved it. Everybody had it. I wanted to have it too and be cool, so I got it. Uh, I took a few pictures with it and then never really used it. I not a not a huge fan. I'm gonna put that one in no thanks. Okay, but before you dislike this video, it has nothing to do with Ramsey. Okay, everyone loves Chris Ramsey, including me. All right, now we got the Reno Red Cherry Casinos. This is another one. It's metallic. It's metallic red and it's the same color as the cherry on the deck. I don't really fuck with this one, to be honest. I'm gonna put this one as no thanks. Uh, it's probably, this one and the green one are probably my least favorite cherries. So uh, those are the ones that if I had to remove two from, from my collection, absolutely red and green. All right, next we got the Orbit V5. Uh, this one I think is a brick worthy deck, absolutely. However, um, to me it's, I mean like, again, if if, there was a restock of this deck and they were available again, I wouldn't buy a full brick, I'd probably buy a half brick. Um, definitely one that I would use as an EDC though, but to me, I mean, you gotta think about a brick, that's 12 decks, how long does it actually take you to go through a full brick of cards? And, and for me, I'm not a performer, I'm not out there having my cards signed and ripped and torn anymore, so, you know, six, I mean, like that's, that's really all you need. All right, now the Orbit V2, this is a special one. Like, if you've seen any of the videos I've done on Orbit, ranking their decks, whatever, this one has always been one of my favorites. Uh, I own one, I use it all the time. It's the only one I own. It's beat to hell, but I do use it a lot. And, and this is one that if it was available today for normal cost, I would buy a brick of for sure. I love that deck. I really, really love it. Tahoe Blue Cherries. I like these more than the red, but not that much. I'm putting them in don't love. Uh, no disrespect to uh, Mr. McKee over at Pure Imagination. I love the cherries. I love a bunch of the decks, but uh, these are, you know, I don't know why these ones are on the list. They should have put the cooler ones. All right, next we got the Gold Foil Monarchs. Um, I love this deck. I think this is probably one of the coolest Monarch decks. Uh, if it was available in normal, normal price, uh, normal quantities, uh, it'd still be an EDC. I'd probably buy a half. Brick. It's too fancy. You know what I mean? Like that one, I would I would prefer over the other ones. But like, when would I use that? When would I need twelve of those? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Uh, and finally, the first V1. Um, I probably, you know, in my years of interacting with you guys, meeting people in the community, talking cards, I've probably never heard more people praise a deck of cards from anybody, uh, and let alone somebody who is most popular from YouTube. And that's crazy. Uh, I love this deck. I love every single thing about it. I didn't pre-order it uh, when Ramsey was coming out. I just wasn't really, I mean, I wasn't really collecting at the time. I was already doing deck reviews, but I was not a collector. Um, and I regretted it. And then I, I was lucky enough to get my hands on uh, on three decks later on in life. And I cherish them. I have one left <laughs> and I love it very much. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one uh, Brickworthy. 
And that is my rating right there. It looks good actually. I'm, I'm fairly happy with this. And I think, I, I think I'm ready to commit to it even. Uh, so I'm gonna throw up kind of a final score, uh, a little screenshot of this up on the screen so you guys can see it. And most importantly, I wanna hear from you guys. Do you agree with my picks? What do you disagree with? What would your ranking be? And uh, of course, I wanna know if you guys like these types of videos, because if you do, there are some other more interesting ones on here, like specific brands of playing cards I could rank, uh, and that could be a lot of fun too. So if you guys like that, of course, drop a like on the video. Hope you'll consider subscribing for more awesome videos, just like this one. And if you're interested in tier lists or just more interactive stuff like this, uh, leave me a comment letting me know. Go ahead and make sure you drop the hashtag tier maker in there. We'll give some love to this company that helped me make this video. Whew. All right, everybody. Thank you again for watching this video. As usual, I don't know how to end it, but I do hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. I know I will. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. So fast. And every moment counts, baby. I don't want to miss a thing. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars